on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Does anybody have anything they wanted to add or amend? I do. <laughs> uh, could we add the BRI at 630 regarding the bulb outs? BRI. And then under reports, motions, and ordinances, it'll just be a, we could do it after the discussion of the water bond, just a brief. Uh, on a zoning permit, about a zoning permit um, for a gazebo to go with the rec area. Okay. Just to talk about that. Where did you want to put that? At the rec near the pool? No, 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 on that. After discussion of schedule for water bond boat and system upgrades, it just should be like a less than five minute discussion. Okay. And, uh, I'm just hang on. I'd like to add a, um, an executive session if we don't use, even if we use this one, um, like to add a, an executive session for personal matter. Okay. That's it. Sorry for so many changes. Stuff came up right after the agenda was printed and published. I have one that I'd like to add to me to um, designate me as the <coughs> representative to TLRC. Yay! And Carl is the alternate. <coughs> Carl also. Okay. I'm sorry, Trace. What was the third thing? Um, so we did the bulb out 630 BRI. Um, so zoning. The zoning, a zoning permit. We was the bulb out the zoning permit. Yep. Uh, uh, personnel matter for executive oh, session. Right. Executive and then Paul just said to add he and Carl as. Um, Delegates to TRORC. And now is that two rivers? Yeah, no, I know. Is that so? Are we just adding him now, or are we adding that as an item to be discussed? I think we'll add it as an item to be discussed okay. after the. All right. Just put it on there. There's only one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All set now? Yes. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay. right. Pretty sure that's. I move we accept the minutes as amended. Second. I mean the uh, agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, is Jack Calgary here for? I am. Okay, so if, any, if the board's good, we'll just skip ahead to the appointment. Oh yeah, wait, hold on one second. One. We forgot to do it. Hold on. We have to do public comment in inquiry, but we'll, <laughs> I jumped ahead accidentally. You did? Yeah. You want me to wait? Yeah, yeah I guess so. Just a moment. So, um, so much here. So we'll just open it up to public comment or inquiry. If there's anybody who would like to speak in regards to an issue that's not on the agenda this evening, this would be the time to do it. Just make sure that when you do so, even though we might know many of your faces, that uh, for the record, just uh, state your name and, and then you're concerned. Yeah? I actually need to do that. Um, actually, there's two things. The first is you're all aware of the, the school pictures, and we've been trying to decide what to do with them. And I think we've come up with a really good solution. We're going to hang them in the hallway. We would also like to hang them right along here and over here. We need to put up um, the, uh, the picture rails. My husband and I put up the picture rails downstairs in the museum and, and in the conference room, and we'd be happy to do it here and in the hallway as well. We just need your approval for it. Does it, does any, does it meet all the codes to the historic preservation of the building? Yeah. And no driving nails and such? Huh? That we can't put holes in the walls with nails. They're permanent, we can. Okay, I, I didn't know that. No, they'll be permanent. So, like, it's the historical society that came up with this. And the historical yeah. society is the caretaker of the building. Okay. Right. I don't have any problem with that. I mean, I, I, I would just say as long as we're conforming to the, yeah. the code. 
that we're, we're good with that. Um, I don't know if any of us really absolutely know exactly what we can and cannot do with this building, but <laughs> as long as it's been investigating, we can do that. I, I'm sure it sounds like a good idea. Yeah. So. And uh, the other thing is the forward festival and the BRI are working together. We're going to have a street. We're working on having to have a street dance at Babes. Um, on September 21st, which is the day of the Polar Festival, when they know about um, I just, you know, ask courtesy just to tell you about it and make sure that you're okay with it. Okay. So it's just staying in the confines of their property? Yeah, it'll be hooked off. Um, but of course, the parking lot right next to the hardware store is owned by the town. So, you know, Whoever can dance over there, what happens? But, but like I say, it's a forward festival function. I just wanted to bring it to your attention that we would like to do it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Any just out of curiosity, does the forward festival carry their own insurance, or do they? No, the they stay under the BLC. Yes, yeah. they are. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Anything else is either? That's it. Sounds good. Anybody else with common public comment or inquiries? Anything that's not on the agenda? I see Carl snuck in. Anything you got, Carl? No? Hey, Mac is there still the road goes off. The whole thing. I know yeah. they've been up there. Oh, or sorry, my driveway was great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they stopped the truck work. They started tackling that today, I believe, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So they're going to spend a day or two up there doing some work. So. Anybody else? Any other comments? Yes, sir. Uh, this is about anything? Sure, yep. Okay, uh, I have a comment that I came down here about three years ago, two or three years ago, and complained to the school, uh, the town board, about the, the state of the cemetery wall up there at Cherry Hill. Okay. Three years ago, there was only like one spot down. Now there's about four along the front facing. I know the town can't afford to go up and take care of the whole fence, but it seems like they could do part of it and then keep doing a part every year. But no, they don't. Why? Well, I don't have the exact answer for you. I know we, it was Interesting because we were yeah. actually just talking about the yeah. cemetery when we were taking our drive there yeah. last week. Uh, Cecil Washburn just, he came to me maybe a month or two ago and he talked about it because it had come up at another meeting and so he and I chatted a little bit and we did um, put some money into the budget to actually deal with it in the next budget that the select board will tackle in the fall and he and I were talking about it and said we would need to do, he and I would have to do a little more investigation you know, the equipment and how to do it, but we had spoken about it, and um, he said he had brought it to people's attention in the past and nothing had happened either. So this time, we actually put it in the draft budget so that I could, we could talk about it to the board and set some money aside. And I like your idea of doing a piece at a time. I think that's... Well, that's the point would be, excuse me, the point would be, we did have money set aside for it, but uh, due to the floods or something, they had to use the money some other place. I mean, that's good, three, four years ago, but yeah. things are, time's running out. Yeah. Something's got to be done with that wall. No, you're right, and, and he and I, I, we must have been maybe a month, a month after that he brought it up, so we decided to set some money aside to deal with it. So, to actually put it in the budget, that way it's in there too, so we could deal with it. But you're right, and I like your idea about breaking it up into smaller projects. We need to get somebody up there to, who knows what they're doing, and look at it for us and give us some good advice. Um, you know, that's what that's what uh, Susan and I were kicking around is who we knew who could give us some good advice on how to deal with it. We had gotten a price from Greg Barra when back when Keith was the manager. Okay. And is he a I mason? Huh? Is he a mason? He's a, he's a, he does all the stone work, all the stone walls. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah he, he lays up dry stone. 
uh, but he had gotten a prized key, and then Greg couldn't, could never find it. And I had spoken to Greg a couple of times over the past couple of years about resubmitting a bid, because obviously the price would be different than it was four years ago. And was he interested in doing that? He was interested in doing it, but he, hasn't. But he wanted to uh, get have, be contacted by the town okay. to give some specifications um, you know, so he could uh, draft up a bid. Well, maybe I could do is set up a meeting for him and yeah. see Sol and myself, and we could go take a peek at it. So. Yeah. All right, thanks. Um, so it sounds like we'll set up an appointment with Greg Barr and have and, uh, maybe see Sol myself and go look at it and, and see if we can't you know, break it down like you're suggesting in smaller projects and put the money in the budget so we'll actually set aside specifically for that. Money in, for that for that, for that, that specifically for that, yes, yeah. And I think that sounds at least it's a start. That's right. I think you're right. And I and I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Charles in the back, but the last time we did work uh, up at the cemetery that we put some money aside was to do the upper drainage there. That there were there was some drainage issues at the upper, I'll call it the upper end of the cemetery. Uh, that was done there. That was probably about that time frame, three, four years ago. That was yeah, there was a culvert that was put in. There was some uh, some ditching work, and um, Doug might know that what we did up there was a couple years. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if the town put the culvert in. They put the one by the cemetery, but the one that leads up to the far line, so whatever that organization that they had. Yep. That driveway leading up there, what they did, they diverted the water down to the culvert at the road and then diverted it across the road and then down and right. then diverted it back into. Now, I don't know what section that we were responsible for, right. but I don't think we were responsible for the road up one that leads up to the far line. I think it just went across the road to run down past the cemetery, shall we say. So we do not worry about so it sounds like a good plan to get an estimate on mm -hmm. on the fixes up there, and then we can start putting that into the budget to get uh, yeah. uh, pieces. Yeah, because we just threw a number in for our placeholder just so we could do it. Yeah. So I'll okay. get hold up. Thank you, sir. Does anybody have anything else? Public comment? I got a big stand for um, asking about Cushing Drive. Uh, I don't know if anybody's been up there to look at it. Um, there is a problem with four foot deep washout right where it makes a sharp turn up to the three houses that are up above. It's it's something that's gonna take take that corner a little too narrow and end up in trouble. Especially if you do a now on the house, the first one up in that section. Uh, we bought that in April, so I got it worth up there. There is a swale that comes down from where it turns and goes very sharp up to where Kathy Day and uh, Mary June Taylor's house is. But there, is a, there was a paved swale that's completely overgrown. I thought it was hard to raise the fourth top man the bottom of it. Because all the stuff comes, what happens is it clogs the storm drain right by the telephone pole on the corner. And everything just goes right, right down to my driveway right into my basement. I have probably this much silt in my basement right now. At 26, the big part of the ran down the National Bank So, uh, if somebody can go up and take a look at it and see if we can do something about it, before, we're going to lose the whole road if we don't. You know, okay. It's it's pretty deep. So Cushing Drive, and then so that's the four of the deal. Cushing Drive, and, and then uh, there's the that's where the wash is, and then the swale is. The swale is right right just below, just Perfect. below. Okay. Okay. So that's no, this is further up. Oh, further up. This is further up. It's up beyond, behind, beyond Jan Burns house. Okay. But you'll see it when you find it. Okay. 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 Excellent. Thank you. And if anybody, if, if, if you know, anybody from the crew needs, I, I'll walk up with him and show them what's going on if necessary. Okay. You know what he's talking about, Doug? Yeah, um, I'm, that's the first time I've heard about it. I don't know what he's speaking of. Yeah. We'll take a look at it again. Yeah, that'd be great. I think it's a road about that. Yeah. Absolutely. We don't need that. No, we don't. No. All right, guys. Right. No, I'll send Alan up there tomorrow. 
Anything else? Public comment? Inquiry? Seeing nobody else, we will now move on. Um, apologize there. We got you all excited to come up here and then enter the fraternity. Okay, I've got some, some handouts just so that you can go along with me. And, uh, this is in reference to my mother's memorial up on the Campbell Road there, and which my my dad uh, put in. They, uh -huh. they have that too. They have this. No, like what you have. Um, this. Yeah, she. Yeah, I already gave it to him. Okay, good. It's just so you know. <laughs> All right. Um, I think in that in that. Um, uh, that my, my dad did there, he, if you read along, it says perpetual care for uh, the memorial up there on the hill. He gave $10,000 at the time, uh, back in 88, and uh, Bethel never has spent any money on the memorial other than one time out of the day down the tree. They have spent over three thousand dollars from this account. Where it went, don't know. But anyway, there's uh, over twenty-three thousand dollars in the account at this particular point, and it's just sitting there making money year to year to year to year. Uh, did you take some pictures of that to show them? I, I did, and I'm not sure if I, I, did, I forgot to print it now. Mo went up and looked at it. Chris Jarvis okay. has seen yeah, it. So we, a couple people have yeah, gone up board and looked at it. Your father did that. Okay. Oh, that's right. That's Mo. <laughs> um, so, from this backup from the culvert there on Campbell Road, it really raised havoc with that, that whole area there, and water went into the spring. And then, when they redid the road, they, they brought it up about two feet. So now, in order to get to the spring, you have to walk down in. And uh, right now, that whole area is just full of uh, stuff left from the flood. So what I'm kind of proposing, we've got to do something. It's, it's, it's just a shame to, to leave that thing the way it is. Um, there's $23,000 in here that's doing nothing not doing Bethel any good, it's not doing my family any good, and it's not work needs to be done in the spring. So what I'm proposing that we, this Mr. Barr that you were just talking about, getting him up there and taking a look at that thing so that we can raise that spring area up, not the monument itself, but the spring area up so that if we do have rain come down through there, it is going to direct right into that spring. And something's got to be done because it's, it's really no good way it is. And if there's money here, it's not going to cost Bethel anything, it's not going to cost us anything, my family anything. But I think the way this says, it's perpetual care. And it depends on how you want to uh, read perpetual, I guess. But I think. Or you something to think about. Now, I know you're not going to make a decision probably tonight anyways, but I think that we should be able to take this money and fix that where it's back where it should be. And maybe fix it so there is no more maintenance. Because I used to go up about twice a year, mow and weed eat the area, because it's a pretty small area uh, where the spring is. And uh, I was talking to the guy that from Boston that owns the Charlie Wilson farm now. And he didn't even know there was spring there. He knew the monument was there, but he never realized there was water there. And I think over the years, a lot of people use that. It's great water. But right now, there's a lot of stuff from the, you know, from the flooding in the spring. So that would need to be cleaned out also. So it's just seemed, I think it's a shame to uh, lose the use of this. And, um, Take some of this money and use it. I know um, Carol seems to think we'd have to go to a um, uh, probate to do it, but I think the way we, I read this, and if it's okay with you guys and your board and my family, we should be able to 
use this money and, and get it fixed up to what you need. Okay. So I'll definitely, I, I've been up and, you know, <coughs> I, I've driven by that probably a hundred times here in the last month and a half doing the FEMA, up with the FEMA mm -hmm. work on yeah. Campbell Road. So I, and I've stopped several times to kind of look at it. And we definitely have, I think short term, you're absolutely right. In the short term, I think we could definitely, we working, you know, the town working with the family, clean the, the area up better. Um, I would agree on that. We do have some long-term challenges there with a combination of, uh, you know, the, the water that comes down from the top of the mountain there and the culvert system that's there. You know, to get the water to bend uh, through that culvert, which we found out this spring didn't work very well and it ended up, you know, taking that piece of road out. Um, and then, I, you know, just kind of looking through the, the, um, the public fund account for, for this trust, uh, the challenge that we have right now is not, I don't think that the town doesn't want to help you. I think the challenge right now is, uh, the, at least the way I have read it, is that the, that the town will provide uh, maintenance uh, for, uh, for the area on years that interest is earned. And, being that the trust, or being that interest rates have been very low for a long time now, there's a bar there, I think it's $600. It is 600 yeah. So the interest has to accumulate $600 in the, in the account before the town can legally take the money and then spend it to do something there. I did ask. And the problem we've had is interest rates have been so low that the account has been generating, you know, over the last, well, nothing has been taken out of that account since 2010, so it's been nine years, and you know a lot of those years because interest rates are only one or two percent, you're only getting you know eighty dollars or a hundred dollars a year in that. But you're right, the the account over since '88 has gone from ten thousand to twenty-four thousand currently. Uh, so there's funds available to do the work, but the way that the trust was. Uh, was worded it makes it challenging for us to take that money. You know what I mean? So I well, used three thousand over three thousand on the property. Okay. Okay. And but where it went, I have not a clue. Right. No, okay. It doesn't matter. So um, what I'm what I'm saying is is that I think I don't know whether legally we have to go to probate to get this somewhere or another circumvent this money so it can be used to repair this thing up here. Mm -hmm. Because going up there and taking a bath or cleaning that out. Is going to do anything. Right. And uh, of course, it's been there since 81, 82. Never had any problem until this year. Because I, I didn't even know about it until I, I went up to mow and clean it up, and I was going to go up on the upper lot and clean that up. And I go up there and I said, wow. And because you used to be able to walk right in from the main road into the spring, but now you're, you're up about this high and have to go down in, it makes it almost impossible. To get down in there, so right. I'm I'm proposing bringing that that whole thing up, and so that if we do get a lot of stuff coming down, it doesn't just go right back into that into the spring. So how come they didn't uh, put a culvert right straight across the end of Campbell Road instead of coming down the hundred feet or so that it did? Hager was talking about that, yeah. talking to the female about coming putting a line right across right across the road there, right by the spring. And so, um, but that was, that's what he was talking about. Right. And he said he was going to talk with FEMA about that, but that's a reality. According to this will, any money left over from the perpetual care was supposed to go into the uh, public library. Okay. And it looks like it hasn't been done for quite a few years. Well, it was anything over $600 could be used. And it also says about the, the cemetery. The cemetery. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, as yeah. I say, uh, it went. somewhere it went. Okay, that's uh, that's even neither here nor there at this point. But I, I think that somewhere or another we can. Whether we have to go to probate to make this work, uh, which is not a big deal in Vermont, I mean we can do that pretty simply. Uh, any lawyer will tell you that probate in Vermont is pretty easy to go through. Now, now with the uh, just kind of thinking, you know, out right now, but because I, I don't think there's really any way on the board that doesn't want to see us help the family right. achieve the goals there. And we've got a little challenges here with the, 
with the you know attorneys and things like that, the court system. But would the if we if the town signed off to go to probate court and the family did as well, would the, would the family offer to him to pick up any legal fees that might incur to do this process or? Well, I don't think you need to with twenty five thousand dollars because the twenty five thousand dollars at this particular point because. Buffalo's never done anything out there in 30 something years. Okay, so why would they start now? Okay, so what I'm saying, let's use this money to bring it up this upward trip. That's what I think my thought Chris is. Chris Carroll is here and he oh, yeah. spoke to probate, so he understands what I think what we need to do or can or cannot do. So I think you might want to yeah. ask him, he can chime in. What, what's your thoughts, Carol, on how, how can we, okay, uh, how can we work out the bill of access? And the question about where the three thousand dollars going, that has gone to the town of Bethel Cemetery Commission or the Cherry Hill Cemetery. Because if they read the will, the first money goes to the, to the Cherry Hill Cemetery. Excess goes to the fund, and excess goes to Bethel Library. So the three thousand dollars in the past years has gone to the treasurer of the town of Bethel Cemetery, earmarked for Cherry Hill. So that answers the three thousand dollars. Um, the will was written as such that the first six thousand for six hundred has to be added back on the principal, and that has been done. Right. That's why, as Jack said, some years there hasn't been any excess, right. and there won't be. This year there may be a little bit of excess. Um, in order to have this done, the trustees of public funds, with the blessing of the select board, needs to petition probate and get the judge to decide whether we do can invade the principal or not. My thought on that is that if we do it, I think we're setting the precedent. There's been some question this year and last year about the school, because I have a lot of trustee, I, trustees have a lot of money for a from high school. And the question was, there's no more Wickham High School. And there is a couple hundred thousand that was set up by Elmer Wickham and others. And I would hate to think that the school district would see that, yes, you broke the will for a tower. Let's get that money for the town school district or the new school district. I think we'd be setting the precedent if we went and did it. So I think the dot of the left where it is. It's too bad the will was written to restrict Six hundred dollars, because if it wasn't, there would have been a lot more interest. It could have gone to the cemetery. As of December 18 of 2018, because Jack asked me this question, the balance is twenty-four thousand eight dollars. That's the balance of the county fund. Now, Carol, when when you're talking about the um, cemetery, yes, when you buy a lot up there, yes. that includes perpetual care, right? I'm not, a, I don't sell the lots. Okay. I that just handle the money that is left to the trustees of public funds in the town to support the cemetery. Because a lot of the lots in the past, I believe, because when we bought, when I bought my lot, we bought our lot, I don't think we had to put in perpetual care. It wasn't in the dark ages, but it was a few years ago. Now I believe perpetual care is required when you buy a lot. You're paying 500 or, no, $80, $90 for the lot and $200 for the petrol. Yeah. And if you look at $200 for the next 100 years, it's not providing much for petrol. One other the question, what did you mean by the school district? I mean, my dad left money to the school district. No, I'm not talking about the county. I'm talking about the other money that the trustees of public funds had that was left to the town of Bethel for support of Brickton High School. Yeah. That's a totally different deal. Different deal. It's yeah. the Elba Whitcomb fund. And if somebody thought that the will could be broken for Calvary, maybe somebody would think you could break the, the Whitcomb trustees and get that money to the South, uh, not South River, to the White River Valley School District. And I think it would be just setting a precedent that I don't think we should do. That's my personal opinion as a trustee. There are three trustees. I'm only one of them. Uh, we have a meeting once a year, usually. We haven't had our meeting this year because of some health problems that people had. But um, I will bring it up. But I don't think the bill should be broken. See, the problem really is the money's doing nothing. Just sitting there and The money is doing what the will said it would That is true. And but your father will do it. But 
you're, you're, you've got money there that's doing nothing, and you've got a, a spring up there that's in very dire shape that was caused by Bethel's culprit. We've also got two or 300,000 sitting here for the school district. And because they need a new roof, should we take that money and fix the school roof? So, Carol, um, uh, well, thank you for, for your opinion. I don't know. Uh, if, if, if the board was to move forward on issuing a probate court, what would that look like? It, there's a letter required by the trustees of public funds backed by the Senate board okay. asking that the probate court consider taking X number of dollars or all of it or breaking the will or the trust, the will, mm -hmm. or whatever. And I have been trustee since 19-something, 73, and as it says, I'm getting old. But since 73, and I've never had this done, it was never done by my predecessors. Doesn't mean things can't be done. Right. But going to probate, and because if you do that, what do we do with all the other ones? I think we're setting precedent. That, that's my personal opinion. Because we have the um, school district Quicken Fund, school district Clark, school district Cox, and then we have Fairview, Cherry Hill, Limbus, and East Bethel Cemeteries, and the Banshaw, and the Tucker Fund. And if we break one, uh, I just think it's, and the cemetery needs a, a new wall. Um, yeah. I guess he's gone. So maybe we should break all of those trusts, all of those cemetery trusts, give the money to the town, let them fix the damn wall. Maybe, I don't think so. Maybe what we should do first is maybe get an estimate, at least so we would know what we're talking about, money-wise, to get an estimate maybe from someone to to raise. Now, I, I've been there, so I know where your mom's, you know, where it is, and you're right, I walked down a hole to go across. So you're talking about raising the, in, the walls on but, both sides and the actual underneath. Well, I'm not saying we've got to raise the, the monument itself. That right? would be quite a project. But I'm, I'm saying if we built the wall up and built up where the, in front of the spring, so everything was higher. So that people could just walk in from the road. Well, you're not going to be able to just walk in. No, You'll not never get that high. But it'll be a lot better than it is. And, and if you look at what, what's there now, if, if you have any flooding or anything coming down through there, it's going to go right into the spring, the way it's set up right now. What he's talking about is just raising yeah. the spring walls up. No. Yep. The, the original ones are stone there. Yep. Yeah. But, and doing the same thing, using stone. Right. You know, and, and it shouldn't be a big, big project, but it just, um, I just feel that it shouldn't be. There's money here. Why can't we use that rather than my family doing it for the town? So, you know, well, to, uh, if we started at least with a number, okay. we could, you know, I, we could, I could get a number to the board, um, okay. and um, then we could at least understand <coughs> how much money we're talking about, and maybe there's a way to work it into a budget or something like that. Because yeah. first, I have no idea how much it would cost. And One comment: If we do, if you, if we were to break the will and get to use half of that twenty-four thousand, twelve thousand. That's going to cut down a lot on the money going to Cherry Hill and other interest that this earns. It'll about make it go away because the first six hundred dollars from the will has got to be added to principal. Right. So, so if you take half of it away, you aren't going to have anything to add to principal ever. Have anything for perpetual care ever. And the first thing is five or six lots in the Cherry Hill Cemetery. The names are spelled out here: Faye and Rose and. And I think his name is in there too. <laughs> but and this is there's a lot of people. But the first thing that that money does after six hundred dollars is goes to Cherry Hill Center. After that, any left over goes to the fund. After that, anything left over goes to Buffalo. Right. Why don't we? Uh, why don't we? Questions for Carol. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so if we would go down the route of probate. The letter would have to be generated by the trustees. The trustees above the funds with the blessing of the board. So you you folks would, if we you would write the letter. decided that you didn't want to do this, how does that work out? If the trustees said, we don't think this is a good idea. I, I think, yes, but if the board disagrees with us, you're, you're the bosses. We are. We get elected as town meeting the same as you guys do. 
but I, I think you're the boss. The, the money came to the town of Bethel and when the Calgary money was dispersed. And the town gave it to the trustees of public funds to invest. And we're limited to what we can invest in. Mutual funds, bank certificates, and government bonds. And we have about half and half mutual funds and well, why don't we why don't we table this and follow up at the next meeting? And the only reason why I say that is it really well from what I understand looking at the area, the only way we're gonna solve that long term is to move the culvert out towards Camp Brook Road. Right. And I won't say that it's a done deal, but we've already been looking at that culvert through the FEMA program because the culvert that was there got destroyed during the spring event. And the culvert that's in there right now is kind of a temporary culvert. Uh, so we've kind of been hemming and hawing on, do we replace it again, do we leave it in place? So uh, we might be able to talk and see if we can do that as part of the mitigation piece. Because if you, if you put that culvert over towards camp, the camp of road, it would eliminate all these problems. Right. right. Or, or future problems. Yes. And um, you might not have to uh, change things around. You know, just type that. So why don't we look to see if maybe we can uh, take advantage of that and the things. And then if we did do that, that would probably alleviate a lot of the larger money value work that would have to be done there. And then I think what small amount of issues we have right around the area would be more minor that we could probably, or we or the family could probably take care of without having to go down that road. But, yeah. You know. So I don't know this, Mr. Carr. Well, everybody tells me that he's really good. Um, does he live here in, in Bethel? No. Is that the north? I found the north from who lives on the north. And his last name is Carr. Yeah. Okay. Chris. Right? Chris Carr? Right. Oh, I was saying, right. even Chris. Yes, uh, no matter what we do to make it accessible, can't we do what we did on Cherry Lane Cemetery, put a short culvert in so it's walkable? Well, if we're able to move that Right, culvert, exactly. If we can move that culvert, so, I mean, I guess the excuse that we could probably use with FEMA right now is that the water has to come down and then it kind of elbows it back in front of the memorial and then it goes through the culvert so it kind of snakes its way down. Maybe we can more Never linear, before. put the pipe in there, we might be able to make a case and get paid for it. As Jack said, that road was level with the, with the yeah. monument, the yeah. spring was. So we'll have to uh, let, let Teresa and I yeah. work on that. And I'm not sure we can put on the next uh -huh. agenda just because okay. we'll have the water information. That might be a big night, but we'll see how it goes maybe the one after. Why don't we work on that this week? Okay. And, and Teresa will follow up with you uh, the week after. So now, where we think you, about. you mentioned something about if it was possible that you could clean that area up where people could get in there. Is that possible? Mm -hmm. Well, well, what I meant by that is there's a lot of debris that's in and around. Exactly. And it, I mean, I could go up there in 15 minutes and shovel out that wow, sort of looks like it. And uh, uh, you but but the, axis, the axis to the area isn't possible unless that culvert's moved because because of the erosion stone that's in front of that. And the erosion stone is solving a big purpose right there by having it there so that it can slow down water flow to get into the culvert. So uh, pretty, I, heavy, I, pretty heavy I, stuff in there so if you try yeah. to show up you're gonna be there for I think the first priority is let's see if we can take care of the culvert. Okay. And other means of having to go through the court system. And I, I think what I'll do and, is I'll I'll call this bar and take him up there and have him take a look at it and see what he thinks, if that's possible. And, you know, at least get something in the works. At least if we get a price on raising the wall separate, and then we can just, we'll figure out the culvert yeah. piece. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. Then I won't do anything until I, until I get have yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good to see you. Thank you. Any further discussion on on that item or no good? Yeah. We can we can figure out a way to do it without having to break the will and go through all those. I don't I, 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 I
Uh, I don't think we ought to break the will. No, 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 no I'm just thinking. I, I think we can. There's a solution to it. I think we have a pretty arguable there that we could probably do that. So well, you can use that as a uh, as a possibility too because it's obstructing a. Uh, well, what I, at least what I'm thinking is if it works out the way I would envision it, that we could probably get assistance to put the, new, the culvert in the right spot. And probably take out the erosion stone in front. Somebody might clean that up for but us. But then the permanent cleanup work would have to be done through others. Um, that probably would be part of that. You know, kind of thing. So no. Maybe we could do some different things. So. No. All right, 630, well, 645. BRI. Right Hi. Just want to let you know that these things have been nicknamed the Jarvis Bull Belts. Uh, so, just want to let everybody know that in your mind now. So, tread easy on them. Oh no, we're, we're totally in here. You know that. We're the fans. Um, we're here to find out what's going on with them this year. Um, they were supposed to have been in installed May or June. And the proposal now, because we have to gather data on, can, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Bob, can you hear me? Yeah. Can, yeah, okay. Um, we were hoping that they can go in next May so that we can gather a whole season's worth of data. So that's what we're here to ask. So she's right, obviously, the, there was discussion at a prior meeting when the road foreman was here about putting them in. Um, they ended up only two of them, I believe, ended up going in. Um, one of them is in front of the hardware store that needs to be actually in front of Spalding Press. Um, at this point, at this juncture with school starting Wednesday, I know we all know we're behind the eight ball on the roads. It seems as though what we should do is leave the two that are there for the rest of the season, take them out, and then in the spring start fresh and let let them be put in where they're supposed to be put in and then BRI has some great ideas about about them and let them collect the data that, that they need. I mean it's it, it makes perfect sense to put them in and, and it sounds like they're gonna do some good things with them and and let's give them a chance where they're really supposed to be. This is we put there at least there's two in to kind of you know be there but it's definitely not what they needed. So it seems though if they can't go in this year we should just start fresh put him in the spring. In the meantime, we've got Alan to order what he needs to anchor the one in front of Spalding Press, and I believe the mass, the mass coma work must be done now anyways, and then we'll see them doing another project. Unless, of course, wait, however, we yeah, should say, I was just going to say, however, there could be a fall in this plan. Because they may not, it depends on the water bond. Obviously, that would be a Main Street project. And they wouldn't go in. You wouldn't have to worry about slowing them. Yeah, you wouldn't worry about slowing them. They wouldn't be there. But we would still have them. And if it if it hopefully passes, which it it, it needs to pass so that we can get the work done, we would still have them. And then the following season, be able to put them in and, and allow you to do the things that you know that you want to do, which which sound good, and, and moving them you know to the new locations, which also seemed better. So. I apologize. We, yes, we had they, we the plan was they'd all be in and then it just it just didn't get done. There was a lot going on. Um, I we haven't discussed this part of it, but I wonder if we should just pick up the ones that are out already so that they don't suffer any more wear and tear because they're really not doing anything right now. Could do that. Yeah, put it on the list of things to do. Make sense. I can't imagine it would take. How long does it take Doug, to get those things out of the ground? Any idea? just getting them all in the, the right place and putting them together. So, um, you know, to take before somebody out. else and runs over them. If we can take them out before the board festival, it's going to be yeah. a lot of traffic and a lot of okay. people down there in that area. And that's the 21st, right? Well, it's the 21st. Yes. Okay, that sounds like a good, I'll give it to the for and then tell them that you'd them out before forward fast. Is everybody <coughs> okay with that? Uh, as long as they, they are key to the 
we haven't done anything with them this season, so I don't think that they have any. This is a, this season is just a bus. Yeah, talk about what's going on next year. Yes. Yeah. No, that's okay. And um, but taking that out is a really good idea. Yeah. And um, so I'll, I'll get to speak to Alan in the morning and tell him they need to come out before forward pass. Great. And then, you know, hopefully, well, well you know what would be great? We'll get the water bond in, the range would be paved, it'll look lovely, and then be the perfect timing for you to put them in the fall and something. <laughs> <laughs> For whatever reason, even though people think that they, when they're installed, that the roadway becomes narrower, which it doesn't, the ones in the hardware store took the biggest beating last year. So the idea this year was to put the ones in at the bank. Of course, then they had demolition going on at the bank, so we, you know, and then what we wanted to do was move the ones at the hardware store down to the printing press because that's the next crosswalk and get that way because it seemed like everybody, every time you went through, they were either parked on it, the one in front of the hardware store or running over. So, um, but I think it was just kind of a, uh, between the spring issues that we had in the town, they got the first set out there, but the second set they were waiting for the bank to finish up so they could put it in and that just really got done and, you know, so. So I guess we'll be looking back at it in the spring. Yeah. Barring well, any right, we'll see. Well, we'll see how it goes with the water bond and all that. Yeah. Right. The water bond? Yeah. Oh, the water, the bond vote will actually be November 5th. Right, yes. And, uh, but there's going to be information next week, our next meeting, and we're gonna start putting out stuff on Front Porch Forum and Facebook and all that about the discussions and be a big meeting on the next Slepper meeting, which is September 9th. And people in the state will be here as well as uh, all the Chaliot engineers. And, um, and of course, there'll be more meetings and informational meetings and mailings and so keeping everybody informed. Great, thank you. Thank you. Do you need to slide this thing? No, I'm good. I, I, I got it centered around <laughs> one. Please don't get in a minute. We should move this, this. We're good. We should move the tables this way next time. Yeah. Yeah. Or something. yeah. All right. Any further discussion in regards to the bull belts or does BRI have anything else? That, anything else come down the pipeline or no? Um, the banners. Thank you. Yeah. 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 I know that if somebody sees the town crew putting up hands, they're going to probably come through the roof because of the road conditions. I think you're absolutely right. And that's very good. Well, I've been looking at it trying to figure out how we can get up there, but I think we can pull it off. We used to do flags. Okay. Yeah, yeah you know what? Tall guy. You just talk. Yeah. That's that tall guy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think, uh, do you have one? Or? I, we do have one. I was going to say, there's some hope. Those are supposed to come back to us. Those are, those are the old, there's the, the, a, a second set that was put on. Oh, okay, so I packed them all in a clear tone. So those are saving sound? The other ones are saving sound, the new ones are saving sound, so we'll try to figure out on time if we can do it. You know, I mean, there's no industry we can get it done. That's not done. Savannah, you may want to contact Rawlton to see if you can use their boom truck. Because that's what we used last time to put those up. Okay. So it would be a lot quicker and a lot safer for us to one coming off of that. I would just okay. so operate the boom truck. Is that something that you could... I, mean, I could check. I, if you want, I could check with them uh, and really let easy. you know something about that. If you do it on a day which I'm not working, I'd be more than willing to just get that boom oh, truck right for you. What's that? A Sunday afternoon when it's quiet. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
I get, I get with, I get with Ralston to see if it's possible we could use that and get with you on the date that we can do it. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. So like, we're going to change that. We're up right now. We're in fact, so we got a whole other set made. Okay. Thanks, Doug. Yeah. What? Good date. Oh, All right. Moving along. The uh, GLCT annual meeting. As far as part of town fair, um, I'm not sure. If, uh, there's information about town fair. Uh, Mo said you guys all received it, but there's also we got we have them as well. Um, I'm not planning on attending town fair this year, but if you are, you can look through there and see there's different, um, you know, interesting topics that are addressed. Uh, if someone is going, we could designate them as a voting delegate. Nobody has to go. Um, what happens is the LCT sends out in advance changes that, you know, that you'd like to see um, them basically deal with when it goes to lobbying something at the state of Vermont. And, so you can put in your two cents about that if you want. Um, obviously, a lot of other municipalities go. They probably have the same concerns we do. So I don't, I mean, if someone is going, then it's terrific. But if you're not, then we don't have to send a bill there. So I don't know if any of you are planning on going to town fair. No. Okay. So I mean, normally. It looks like nobody's. Normally, the delegation would be, you know, the permanent town manager. Yeah, um, it could be. In this case, if they're gone. For this year, is there anybody from the board that would like to substitute and take over that spot? I don't know. I can't do that thing. Well, I will tell you another thing, too, is you still, um, what you can do, too, is, is sorry, that this VLCT will send out. Um, what they are, what they propose for changes in the bylaws, and we can still chime in on that. We can still put in our two cents, and you just don't have someone there to vote. I've been before, and it's nothing I have time to repeat right now in October. But we certainly could. Um, we still have a voice, and we can still use it by responding to the information they send out. So just so you know, you do have more than one bite of the apple.
So, um, I was asking the board to, del to designate me as the representative to the TROC with you as an alternate. Is that position that you? Yeah, that's all right. Okay. Um, and for any years since we started trying to get a full time replacement, so, um, but yeah, you put me back on there as an alternate. I'm just talking about the chance. Heavy on. What's that? Only you have the alternate. Yeah. Because I can't. You need me to send in a, a letter of interest? Um, no. But do we need to yes. appoint? Yes. Yeah. Move to appoint Paul as our delegate to, or our representative to TRORC. Great. Right. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Do we have to, uh, Appoint the alternate. Or I just uh, might as well. I move to appoint Carl Russell as the alternate representative of TRO. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. And I'll email them tomorrow. No, no, Peter. Yeah. <coughs> else further on those topics? Next up we have the FEMA update. So I can go over the project hit list and then um, Therese can go over the recent bid activity and what coming out was bid or needs to be awarded. Um, so the Lilliesville Campbell Whittier piece as far as what's been contracted through FEMA um, has been completed, all that work, I actually the final invoice went in this weekend, um, you know, make walk the talk to see if maybe we might want to extend that, that yeah. over. <laughs> but uh, uh, that project actually came in under budget. Um, the, uh, uh, that contract was supposed to be completed by the 30th of this month, so things are ahead of schedule. The southwest quadrant, which is, uh, you know, Dunham Road, um, Fair, Ring, Ringe, um, those ones we are, uh, we'll definitely have them all done by the end of this week, if not, you know, maybe Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, again, that was a contract that had to the 30th. Um, the East Quadrant, which is which is um, Sanders Road, um, Christian Hill, um, those sections, we are probably about almost halfway done on that contract. Two, two, uh, a third to a halfway done on that. Um, that has a completion date of the fifteenth. Things have been going pretty well on all those contracts. Um, the Northwest con contract, which is, um, if you live out in the Gilead End, um, you probably saw some action out there um, last week, and you'll, you'll see a lot more of it this week. Uh, that contract pretty much just started. Um, the uh, Camp Brook Road paving, uh, we'll start right now. The contractor says the 9th, it's September, sometime the week of the 9th. Um, that, that work doesn't need to be completed until October 12th, but uh, probably won't take much more than a week to do. So, um, so I would say right now on the work that we have out there, contracted wise, we, we are at or ahead of schedule on getting everything done. Uh, and we're continuing, uh, I've been continuing to work with Alan and Therese on, as we're picking off the FEMA work to put together a punch list of what needs to be done on other jet, other roads, so I can continue to give that information in there, and as Carl had saw that some action was up in McIntosh Hill, 
uh, today. So those are the conversations that we're having of coming in behind the FEMA. We, we found out that it's better to come in behind than it is to try and do it before. Um, so we've been coming in behind uh, anybody that's out in Lilliesville or Whittier. Uh, we went and fixed those roads um, as well. And uh, I would say any of these roads that are in or near the ones that we currently have going on, we'll have some more work to do up on Christian Hill Road towards the top of the hill. And then there's, there's several spots on Sanders Road that, that we'll have to do um, as well. So um, just because the contractors are, have left the area doesn't mean that we've abandoned it. So um, we, we hope to be you know, a week or two behind that yeah. cleaning up. So, um, and then you have some new bids and maybe yeah. just tell us then what we got else coming out. So, um, what else we have coming out is, uh, so I have those, yeah, so, uh, so uh, I put the P-Vine, we have a slide on P-Vine, and there's also a culvert, both of those are engineering. So those have a bid opening of September 13th. There's no mandatory pre-bid, and um, that contract completion date will be February 6th. So basically by February 6th, you're looking for a full design, all the um, contract documents, etc. So that's out to bid. Pinella Bridge, the temporary, is back out to bid. There's a pre-bid meeting this week for only for the only only mandatory for people who weren't there the first time. I did also get a list of other of bridge contractors from the state of Vermont. So I've also contacted them individually and sent them the bid packet information. So if they didn't see it in the newspaper, works in progress on the state website, I also emailed them directly. I've had a couple phone calls from folks who said they were, you know, planning on bidding. So that'll get the temporary in, and then the plan is to put Pebine or Pebine Vanilla Bridge back out. Um, as a design build, um, and we'll and I'll do that. You know, we'll do that this winter, or or actually later this fall. That way, it's out and it can be taken care of in the, in the hopefully in the spring or summer of next year. So that is going to require me contacting the state and getting an extension because Pinello Bridge temporary because we are hitting that date of um, how many days after you have to have your work done by September or something for, for um, temporary work, not permanent. So I will get an extension on Pinello from the state of Vermont as part of the FEMA process. Um, the other bids that were out were the Geico Reservoir Road and the pump access at Bethel Mills. That bid opening was today. And the bidders, I gave you a list. So the bidders for Geico Road were Dylan McCullough, DR McCullough, which is Dan McCullough, and W.B. Rogers, and um, Dylan McCullough came in at $9,890. W.B. Rogers came in at $9,800, so very close, and Dan McCullough, D.R. McCullough came in at $8,522. Um, I think the issue does two separate contracts. Yes. Yeah. So, so sticking with the low bids that yeah. we've been doing with FEMA. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would entertain a motion to award the Geico Road to DR McCullough for $8,522. So move. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. <coughs> Next one was um, the bidders for the Bethel Mills pump station access. Um, Dylan McCullough, $4,432. W.B. Rogers, $4,840. Duranlo, Carol Duranlo, $7,524. And D.R. McCullough, to award DR McCullough for the 
Bethel Mills Pump Station Access Project in the amount of $3,880. So moved. Second. All in favor? Uh, I think the only, only uh, concern I had a little bit is looking at Teresa's. Uh, because they have the east quadrant left to finish by yeah. 915, and these two looks like they're both at 915. Yeah, so. We told them that we would extend the, to September 30th if they needed it or whatever they needed, so that's not a problem. We discussed that. So that's one. All right. <laughs> uh, any more comments or discussion of where's the FEMA work going on? Uh, we had also <clears throat> just a quick, not not a binding discussion by any means, but just a, a discussion in regards to some of the classifications on some rooms that we have. Um, I realized that shouldn't have come. maybe should have discussed <laughs> class four room. Yeah. I think that was just a miswork writing in that. Uh, you know, typically we have like we have our fourth class road committee that you know is usually going out and. Uh, looking at the status of our fourth class roads or, or other roads. Um, and I, I brought this up to Therese because I've been doing tackling the FEMA work and I've been on some roads that, uh, there, there's a few roads that um, currently don't meet class three specifications that are class three. Um, and in some cases, you know, we don't plow those in the winter time. There's one person that lives on the road. Um, you know, we may want to have a discussion on. And they bring the statute to the um, re, You know, maybe potentially reclassifying those roads um, or upgrading those roads to class three standards, one of the two. Yeah. Yeah. I, we had talked to um, the Chris Baum was in from B Trans, and we were talking with about him, talking to him about it, and I was under the impression that class three roads had to be plowed. Um, so I went and looked at the statute, and it says that the minimum standards for Class Three highways are a highway negotiable under normal conditions all seasons of the year by a standard manufactured pleasure car. This would include, but not be limited to, sufficient surface and base, adequate drainage, and sufficient width capable to provide winter maintenance. Except that, based on safety considerations for the traveling public and municipal employees. The select board, after following the process providing that, have the authority to determine whether a class three highway or section of that should be plowed and made negotiable during the winter. So that was kind of a concern of, of mine and, and Chris's. We've driven out the range to fair and concern. And then my understanding was that from what Chris Bump had said, that they had to be plowed, possibly, but they don't actually. Once I read the statute today, it says they don't because we weren't. And so my concern was that we're carrying some liability by having a class three road that we weren't actually plowing, and then if there was a fire or something. So it sounds like the select board does have, because if you couldn't turn around on there, that's, that's very narrow. And so while the owner was driving a small Volkswagen of some sort yeah, of the make yeah. of her car, um, get up there our you know our concern was if we're if you're taking state highway aid eventually believe it or not the state actually comes and looks and then they call you up because I experienced this before and they say hey you're getting class three state aid on that but you are not maintaining it and so then you have to bring it up to standard to throw it up so instead of that coming to you at the last minute it seemed like it's something that we need to address either in the road budget or in, um, you know, when we're talking about setting money aside for road work and setting up projects, there are some roads out there that I think that we might be getting money for that perhaps if the state came, they would have a different take on whether or not we're actually meeting the standard of, you know, the pleasure car and stuff by the statute. So it was just something I wanted the board to be aware of that it took my pleasure car when we were driving <laughs> <it> up there. <laughs> um, so that's why I kind of was a little concerned on it. Yes, Carl? So, um, 
they are the ones that provide all those maps. And right, exactly. Yeah, I'll find out at least where he's at, if he's started it or not, or whatever. So, but thank you. That's, that's good information. If you want to um, turn the, those lights on, it's going to. Oh, sure. And it's starting to get. First, dark. you can't see. You know, we'll be at candlelight here in a minute. Exactly. <laughs> I would do it, but I can't remember where the lights are at. I know. Well, I <laughs> Sunglasses off now, the sun's gone down. Yeah, thank God. It's going down over the hill. It's a little scary because it's uh, getting a little dark out. But, you know. It was, it was on top of, we were paving on Killington Mountain this morning, and it was 41 degrees when I got there this morning. So. Yeah. It's going quick. Yeah. Anybody have anything else in regards to what they're talking about? Do you guys know when they might be doing at least some patching on the Gilead um, tar section? Yes, actually, we, Chris and I have been talking about that too. I know that Alan had bought some coal patch, but um, he was trying to deal with gravel roads first for school bus, but it is on his list of things to do, certainly for, um, you know, snow flies is to put some cold patch in to deal with that and then we do have a have been talking actually chris and i today about a longer range to, to deal as i was telling you about yeah. just dealing with billy and um in general after christian hill for paving but yes um alan is going to be getting those patched certainly for winter hopefully and today it did look like it, you know that there was some obviously great in the Gillian and then also towards the Goodale Bridge. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know like what the plan was for the parallel park to the brook. But I don't know if good if that's is that on WD's uh, I don't have the map in front of me, so I no, don't I, know if that's yeah, I is that the bridge you were talking about or was that camp? No, but I know what you're talking about it is. Uh, well, that was what I was. Well, yeah, we were talking. We've been having some ongoing one, discussions on yeah. some Which other work that, that needs to be done that might not have been covered under FEMA, um, and and that was part of the discussion that we had. Um, I spent most of Saturday and Sunday out in Gilead, staking and resurveying and looking at things. So. Um, I think it just needed bigger riprap last time. You know, yeah. It wasn't ever. A brought out as far as it used to be to be even with the rest of the, you know. Well, we we're supposed to get rip rack there, but it never happened. Yeah, yeah, there there is stuff there is stuff on the FEMA project to put on, on all four corners of that bridge to put some rip rack on it this time. But the section that you're talking about that kind of looks like a parallel road yeah. next to the brook there. Yeah. There's nothing in the FEMA project to. Um, to long term fix that. I think it's going to be, for the most part, get left the way it is. Uh, it's not going to be safe to drive down in the winter. So. It's always gotten fixed before by FEMA yeah. money. So we'll, t we'll keep, I got to talk to the contractor about a couple we of could, spots. We could have to add it to his contract yeah. to fix it. So. Okay. Be, yeah, so we'll talk yeah. to them about that later. Yeah, Chris will talk to WB and then he'll let me know. So, yeah. They should be seeing, I mean, they've been out there. They're on yeah. the Bynum Road now, but. Um, yeah, I mean, I was told it didn't get fixed because it was going to get fixed with FEMA. Right. Oh, okay. It, it probably will. Right. We may just have to add it to his contract. We found that because some of the bid quantities were a little off, that Chris has found is maybe had to add more in one place and another and kind of adjust them as he goes. But he has something else to meet with Jeff Gilman about, so they'll just have to drive by and take a peek at that. And we okay. Will, we'll just add it to their, their theme of work. If not, then Chris will tell us what it is in the room and we'll go do it. So. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, there's, there's several other issues out there that aren't necessarily addressed in the FEMA contract. You know, we had trees in the brook. We know there's a lot of other things mm -hmm. that we need to figure out yeah. how we how we maintenance that. Um, so. Yeah, it's definitely not possible to push a car. 
<laughs> but to point down is the scary part in the winter. Yeah. Even scarier than going up. Uh, oil trucks, utility trucks, fire trucks, none of them will get up there. Okay. It's nothing compared to my bridge. None of them can get up my bridge. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're getting there. Yeah. 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 Mm. Um, any, any further discussion on potential classification of roads? Uh, discussion on the water bond boat system upgrades. So we're three says put together a schedule. Where let's put it ahead here. We have one. Uh, potential updates coming. Yep. Uh, and Tim Mills is here. We're going to be busy here over the next uh, half a dozen meetings. Yes, we are. So as it said here, so Tim and I met with Aldridge Elliott in the state uh, for the 30% design review. And Tim, you can hear me, right? So yep. you can type in. Uh, on the fourth, Tim and myself and Wayne Elliott are going to go to the DWSRF to discuss the loan subsidy and the interest rate subsidy and the terms right now. Um, Tim, he, Tim and I know, as, as I'm assuming you guys know, is that there's a 25% loan forgiveness right now. What we don't know yet is what the interest rate subsidy is going to be. And we'll find that out when we meet with Ashley. Um, and she'll run a couple scenarios for us. What I also don't know is if this is a 30 or 40. Uh, USDA and the state have different terms, and I'm not sure what that will be, so we'll find that out. So we'll be able to have some um, real numbers, which is what we'll be looking for for the September 9th meeting, to be able to talk to you about about bond, about the bond itself, what the bond payment is going to be. Um, Tim and I have it on our calendar to meet on the 5th to um, you know kind of brainstorm the next day once we have numbers to just to think about. Um, whether it's all of the users, some on the tax base, how we could do that, what what we what we think we could do there. So, but we, you know, we can speculate till the cows come home. But until we have a number um, to work with, we don't really know. Um, September 9th, which is your select board meeting, Wayne Elliott, Patrick Smart, Tim Raymond from the state um, will meet with the select board at six o'clock to discuss the project bond. Um, Tim and I have already invited Zoe DeMarco from the Herald. Uh, we're going to have Kelly do a Facebook and front porch form and website postings. Um, I'm going to call Janice Hunger and a um, few people and have make sure that you have a turnout so that while the state is here, we talk about this because this is really, the state is behind us. We need to get this project done and um, there all in favor helping us. They said that they would come to this meeting. Uh, they're willing to come to informationals and other things. So, so they're definitely advocates for us, which is nice, and you know, kind of partnering with us here. So that will happen on the 9th. Um, the select board meeting of the 23rd, you know, we'll sign the bond documents and Wayne Elliott will be here to, you know, talk a little bit about the project again if we did. Um, so that's, that's a good thing. And then my plan is to we obviously have to just keep this on the agenda. The next meeting, whether it's the 14th or the 15th, that way any time, you know, we just want to keep advertising that it's here, have people, you know, come in and ask questions. Um, we will do a mailing to the residents so that in case someone hasn't seen it in the newspaper, hasn't seen it on Facebook, hasn't seen it on Front Porch Forum, hasn't seen it on our website, um, that they get a mailing at home. It'll talk about it as far as you know the scope of the project. And Wayne Elliott has um, told Tim and I that he help us. They do these type of um, brochures, so they would help us with that. And then on the 28th, we'll have we have to have a public informational 10 days before the elect before the vote, which is November 5th. And um, so that's you know required. And um, you know there's some ideas there. Um, Chris had mentioned maybe. Um, <laughs> you know, maybe doing a potluck, maybe to try to get people here. It's always not a bad idea. And um, certainly to get people here. To, to, that's one of the things I've always learned is that food, whether even if we just do cookies and coffee, you know, for that meeting or something like that, it might be nice to have that start a little bit 
beforehand. Uh, the other question was, I'm not sure about October 14th. Uh, it is Columbus Day. Um, is it 28th? Is that a regular schedule? Yep, all these are regular scheduled select board meetings, well, except October 17th. That's just kind of to let you know what's going on. But the 14th is Columbus Day. I don't know if we normally meet on holidays or I, I, we are actually closed that day, but I'm working because the audit is, auditors are going to be here, so I don't, I don't care either way, but I don't know about you all how that works for you. Um, whether you stick with the 14th or go to the 15th. And then, like I said, the 28th is the public informational required 10 days prior to bond vote. And, um, and again, the state will be here. Um, Tim Raymond um, will be here, Wayne Elliott again. It's really, it's just a matter of getting people here. That's why the people that won't come, maybe they'll see it on, on ORCA or at least getting the um, getting the brochure out is going to be key, and getting it out in time so that people can see it and then remember to come to the polls. It might already be on your list, but are you planning to put it on the bulletin out here? The bond vote? Just even when we're doing the informational sessions and sort of the different, like That's we do that for the, the budget discussions, I think. Do you know when the, oh, I don't know this, does anyone here know when the band shell concerts and are they done Usually already? around four of the best, right? Yes, this week, I think, is the last yeah. one. Okay, good. So then Kelly yeah. will get the whole thing yeah. back again. Yeah. Okay, because we do them. share it with them. I wasn't okay. sure. Okay, yeah. So that's just, a good idea. I'll make sure that we... Um, well, the other thing, too, with the presentations, if we could get the projector, and, and I think there was, was there already a, a file prepared that we could use with the projector? No. No, possible to do so. I don't have, no, I think if anything, we well, would probably just have drawings on easels, would be my okay. guess, well, but, that, but some of that yeah. maybe just not understand, you know, it's the, maybe just an overview, like right. one picture, yeah. so people could see the area maybe or something, but yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, so I'll make a note here, have Kelly um, put on town hall. So the, the way the schedule is right now, it looks like the board's going to have that the board's going to have all its information on the night. Yes. So when I say all the information, that would be, you know, how much how much each phase might cost us and how we plan on paying for it yep. with a percentage of, you know, water users versus taxpayers or. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing that concerns me is that we only have a two-week turnaround or one meeting turnaround between getting that information and having to vote on that for bond. That was the only problem I was kind of worried about. Yep. First, the biggest problem because if you start putting this out, the first thing they're going to want to know is how much is it. Yeah, I can. And so until we know, you're you're really you're begging for a problem that you can't solve. Yeah. yeah. So I guess I'm a little concerned that we're going to get the information on the night. You could meet again. I mean, you, we you could know, so if we're getting the information, the, only the few public that are here are going to get the information, and then. Well, we are going to really push that meeting. Right, and then the 23rd is when we need to sign this bond right. document, which my guess is, I don't know, based on whatever that, you know, however that pie looks, you know, who's yep. paying what percentage, we end up turning into a very lengthy discussion on the 23rd that may not get well, we confirmed. Also, you we know? also have the town manager thing we wanted to try to have done by the 23rd. We could add a meeting for sure, and, so and I, I, I worry about. No, I think so. I think the more information, the no. better. This was certainly a concern of Tim's, and but until we put it on paper and got it to you to see what your feeling was like, because yes, we will try to. We are definitely pushing the meeting for the ninth, and you're right. Then a, an ad, a article will go out by Zoe DeMarco, and then you're right. So maybe it wouldn't hurt to have, have to have another one on the sixteenth or something. Or is that the following Monday? September 16th? Yeah, I, don't I mean, that. I'm just throwing it out. We may want to have another one because I could just see there's going to be a lot of opinions and questions that I, I'm sure I'm going to be one of them. And, you know, everybody on this board is probably going to have a little different opinion on yeah. who pays what. November 5th, a, a lock-in date? Does it have to be on November 5th? It, 
it doesn't, but yet it makes sense because you want to capitalize on all the advertising that's going around the state where there's other elections and bond votes and that's the election day, so people are going to hear it from um, yes. New Hampshire, other people that are voting, it makes yeah. sense, but yeah. is that the following Monday? Is it the 9th and then the 16th? Is yeah, because the yeah, yeah. you're pretty much locked in. That means yeah. that you have to, the 23rd, you need to have yeah. the select board move forward with a... A signature on it if you want to be able to get to the yep. informational to be able to get to the bond. Right? The good thing so. is about the 16th is if you add that, you, it's the only thing that's going to be on your agenda. So it would be. <laughs> you just jinxed it now. now we're no, I'm not adding 16. anything else. There she just be, jinxed us. No, yeah. there will be nothing else added to that agenda. <laughs> yeah. It'll have to be you know, order of public comment, I guess, but then the bond vote, and that's it. Or then not the bond vote, bond discussion. So it may be good timing because when Zoe gets her article out, which will probably go out that Thursday, having one fall on Monday would be a good thing. I mean, that, that's, to me, that's probably going to be the biggest hurdle is the what percentage gets paid by who. And uh, Tim yep. and I are hoping to hash and that nobody out. Nobody really and knows exactly what that is right now. And we don't, and we won't know till the fourth. So certainly, Tim and I are hoping on the fifth to sit down and hash out and come out with what we're hoping are a couple reasonable scenarios to present to you to say you could do this or this. You know, to try to narrow that down. Obviously, we know that you want to stay in the three percent range with the you normally. That's your goal for the town budget, and. Um, you know, so we certainly are aware of. Well, I mean, we just have to, you know. I also look and see if we're paying anything off. <laughs> well, the thing with the bond too is, is you're not first of all you're not going to know exactly what the project's going to cost you. Right. So you're going to you're going to be assuming that fictitiously that it's a three million dollar bond, but it could still be only a million and a half dollar project or a two million dollar project. So yeah, that's yeah. that's part of what you really have to focus towards is that you have this number, which we don't know. Right. After the 30% meeting, we I was able to make adjustments on the maps to start not cutting corners, but being a little more precise in what our needs were and where we needed to lay some things out. Um, I avoided some easement issues, so we'll, we'll cut some costs there. Mm -hmm. uh, Patrick Smart agreed to um, let us run a couple of straight lines instead of a looping section, that's going to save us money. So we're still working on trying to knock that down. We're, we're trying to be as fiscally responsible as we can, but get the project done at the same time. And originally it was a one, two, phase one, two, and three, but the way that these systems have been hooked together, you really have to do it as one project. And they're definitely laying that out. And, and Patrick is certainly from the smart, from the state. Patrick and Ernie supported that as one project. And the other thing is too is if generally um, I know how it works with USDA. Tim, maybe you probably know this. I'm, once you start this project, it, in my sometimes there's like a one year warranty, so we may have a little time by before the first bond payment. Which I do know, um, you know, I can look at the bond, the debt schedule and then we'll be able to see is there anything else coming off that we didn't that we're not um, gonna fill with uh, with another payment. Um, the other you know to, to tie that together, I know that we had a big discussion about um, we'll be I think that the for the highway department like the loader and um, international they pay off I think in twenty twenty and talk to a couple people and, and it looks like I'm going to try, I'm going to have Nortrax come in and go through the grader completely and see is, is there a possibility that that purchase can stay. We have to put some money into it, but maybe it's not $325,000 to buy a new one. So we've got to look at that too to see where we're at um, in an overall financial picture. But it does make sense for you to have a meeting strictly on the 16th, strictly for this. For, well, I, more I discussion just, and in case more, you know, people are, yeah. people come. I mean, I, I think obviously the, wa the water, the bond, and the line is something that needs to happen. I mean, we're seeing the, we're seeing, you know, Flint, Michigan, and now Newark, New Jersey, what happens when you aren't responsible, you know. Mm -hmm. um, however, I, I think it's not going to be a cakewalk and all the voters are going to come in and just sign their name. I think there's going to be a lot, you know, between 
the percentage of who pays what and how long the bond is and uh, even though we might be able to fit it inside our budget or you know, we don't know. Yeah. It, it, you know, people are going to get hung up on whatever those percentages are, 75, 25, 60, 40, whatever, 50, 50, whatever it is, and we're going to have that hurdle, and I just kind of, I don't know, I'm just, I I'm a little doubtful of, yeah. of the schedule, and will we get right. that two-week window, yeah. get all that stuff hashed out so that everybody's comfortable in making a decision, and and on the timeline. I agree. And the good thing is you will keep it in the newspaper so that people that are getting the Herald are reading it, people that are at home that are watching ORCA, because you really need to target voters, you know, to make sure that people understand what they're voting for and that you get them to the polls because the system needs to be done. And, and Tim, you know, it was ter terrific, the work that he was doing to go through and, and work with them to make suggestions and we all know that while Bethel has great, you know, you know, the system of the main system has great water pressure, if we only do a piece of this, you know by fixing half it's just going to start, you're going to have one leak after another after another, you're just going to have a continuation of, of repairs. So I don't think you'll find anybody in town that will say that we don't need it. I think I, that's The question is going to be is, how can we afford why it? should I pay for it when I'm not? A yeah. water user, yes. you know, or a perceived water user, you know. Yeah. Um, that's going to be a very big hurdle. The other thing I was just kind of thinking, I mean, I mean, it's always challenging when you go to vote and you're not able to get up and defend it at vote time, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, do we think that we will get our best turnout on a Monday the 28th, or is there a better day or time that works best for people to have a community get together potluck let's get the information out there i mean monday the night to do it is a just yeah i don't tell, know tell me under the, is no. saturday better i mean i don't know i mean friday I, night or something yeah. better day to do it you could you uh, could have the same this same discussion has happened for years in vermont about town meeting whether it's better on monday night better during the day better on a saturday and in the end you generally get the people that you're going to get mm -hmm. um, that are interested, whether, no matter where the night is. It, it's hard to, you know, I do think that. Well, I'm just getting, I'm just thinking, you know, as a parent right now, schools yeah. back in, Monday. a lot of those 50 50 parents that sometimes come out and don't, now we're going to be with whatever, soccer games mm -hmm. and after school stuff. Maybe that's maybe your right question. Maybe somebody needs to get a schedule of like events from the school to make sure you're not. On the same night. Yeah, I'm just wondering if a Monday night is the best night to have it. Or, I mean, you obviously want to get as many people out because if people are not educated, then it's going to be up to them listening to their friends or on their opinion. And, and sure. you know how that goes. So. I think that it doesn't hurt to have more informational. You could always do the one on the 28th, keep it as your regular agenda item, but you could do one before that. You could do one on a Saturday or Sunday. You could do. Um, you know, I, and I, I don't care. I, I do an informational no matter what. I mean, you could get the thing to to get people here would have to be either either it's potluck or we provide coffee and cookies and you know to get people to come and then we we're here and we can answer questions about the project and it's just an informational and, and all the board. Um, it's nothing to be voted on. Even if all the board can't make it that night, that's okay because it's it's um, while you would warn it as a as a public information select board, it doesn't have to be as formal as this. It could be, you know, just kind of a back and forth, milling about talking to people. Or, but um, I think the key to it the more is doesn't pushing the front porch forum, the Facebook, and absolutely, the, and the newspaper articles. And yeah. The, and having the brochure, somebody walks in, can't come to an information, when you hand them the brochure, they have some ideas there. Yeah. And it will get mailed. It'll go to, you know, we'll mail it out just like we do tax bills. So it'll go to, um, you know, the residents of Bethel. Um, and we'll try, we'll work with, like we usually do when we do a mailing list, is we'll work with the town clerk's office to merge it so that you also get the registered voters, which can be renters and not just property owners. So we will certainly um, yeah. work that out as well and get that out. We can also put the brochures in public places at Champlain Farms, McCullough. You know, you can also put them around town. So, um, you know, 
I mean, I just think with the, with the schedule we have right now, I think, you know, the board's got to be prepared to put in some extra comp time hours. Um, because, um, you know, we might need the extra session or two to, yeah. or an extra informational meeting or, you know, whatever it is. To the mail is going out on Thursday. Most people will have it by the weekend, two days. So we could do something that next week, which is the week before our select board meeting on 28th. So do you want to add a September 16th meeting, that Monday, September 16th at 6 o'clock, and have just this discussion on it? Because by then you'll have numbers, and that will certainly be... But, yeah, I don't know. I mean... Because otherwise, you're, you're right. You're going right to the 23rd to sign documents. I mean, do we wait? Do we wait and see how things go on the 9th? And, and if we can come to a decision on the 9th and there's no sense of having the 16th meeting because I mean all you yeah. need is yeah no you can totally do that I mean yeah absolutely and if we can on the 9th and we we then can you warn a you know a meeting on the 16th then what you do is just table that yeah right. you table that yeah. until the continue on the 16th that's fine I just I, mean, I, I think the one big thing that we won't know on the 9th is what the sentiment from the Herald article will be so is it that we just want to anticipate that people that didn't come to this meeting are going to catch wind of it after and we want to have that second one so that they have a place to come have the discussion um, versus if, if we're trying to make that decision that night, we're not going to know if, if people are going to want to right. have that secondary discussion. Well, you're right. I, that's exactly. I think if we do that night, then we're not going to have enough feedback from the public to make a, right. so we'll be making the same make a decision, decision based on the public's yeah. wants. Yeah. It would be more on board at that point, right? right. So you could then push then then add do it at six o'clock on the sixteenth and people will come, you know, they will she's right, they will read the article in Herald, um, hopefully, and we'll have put out the minutes and people that have attended on the ninth will have obviously talked to people, chimed in whether they do it on social media or, you know, in person. So if you do it the 16th, um, you could make that final decision about how the bond vote will go because you can't drag that up too long because we, they, obviously the bond bank is going to need an answer. So the 16th would be the latest, uh, that would be the day. So do we, as a board, do we want to go ahead and establish another meeting tonight for the 16th and then if we don't need it, we can always... Yeah. I think the more, the more meetings we have, the better off we're going to be. I think it's true. Know, place, place, whatever questions. The signing of the bond documents, what exactly is that? Please? So that's when you will actually be signing the, you know, we will have gone through the scope through um, the municipal bond bank, so we will have already done the application and we will have an so amount. So if we get to the bond vote and it's voted down negatively, yeah. what happens? Nothing. It cancels, it cancels the uh, yeah. contract. Yeah, because it's all the language will say that it's contingent it's on a successful bond, yeah. and they even wait even longer because you have that 30-day vote to rescind. Right. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's a wait. Yeah. Right. Okay. So are we good with moving forward with the? Yeah, I think the, the more we have September 16th, yeah. we'll plug a date in there right sure. now, yeah. and based upon what happens on the 9th, we. Yeah. And then what about the 14th? I don't, like I said, I personally don't care whether you get on Columbus Day or not, but I don't know what your preferences or past whatever's for holidays. So I realized when I was typing this up that it was Columbus Day, and I was like, all right, I, I don't know the board. Typically, we either move it up or back uh, on Monday. You know, on, on occasion, we've gone to like a Tuesday. Um, I don't care. I'm going to be working at it. So I don't know how you all feel. What if we moved it to the 7th, just since the, the 23rd, we actually end up with two weeks between. So it's the, the 30th through the 1st of October is one week, and the 7th is the second week. It's essentially, we'd have two weeks between if we went with the meeting on the 14th. Why don't we just move it to the, to the 7th? I, I, are you saying 7th? 7th. Okay, yeah. sorry. I was like, you think 17th? Moving the 14th. To the 7th? Well, then that leaves a big void between there and the 17th. 
The 17th is just a mail-in. The 17th is not a meeting. Oh, that's right. The 17th is just a meeting. But we talked about maybe doing it in June. Yeah, the vote, the public information is October 28th, unless you add another one in. But I just didn't know about Columbus Day. So then the one on the 7th would become another point for the public to be able to come forward and Yeah, it would be just a regular um, meeting and we would add it as an agenda item, just as a discussion item only, but so that if people said, you know, by then you would have already made the decision right. about how it was going to go. But if people had questions, and you may not hear a thing about it, but you could add it and then um, on the 7th if you want. So you don't want to meet the 4th, you want to meet the 7th. I don't know, either the 7th or the 15th is, is good for me. I don't know whether the 15th is more in the middle of that time period. Yeah. Normally you move home. It's really matter what you do. You're going to have a three week. Exactly. You're going to have a three week off. off. And you might, but you won't, if you keep it on the 14th, you'll still be on your second and the second. Right. There'll be three weeks between the meeting in September until that meeting. Oh, what? September 23rd and yeah. October 7th? That's three weeks. Oh. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have three weeks somewhere. Yeah, and what we'll end up doing is, well, it doesn't matter. Doesn't, I was going to be payable. It doesn't matter for that. So you're calm. I can, I mean, I, I can go either way. Yeah, I mean, my schedule would be better to do it on Tuesday the 15th, but we can probably make it. That's fine. One. It's fine. Yeah, I can know. make it either one. Tuesday the 15th? Yeah. All right. Tuesday and 15th. Perfect. Doesn't work for Lisa's schedule, but actually, doesn't. Lisa's got a new job, so Tuesday works. All right. Okay. So we'll say I do it. Sorry. So we'll leave it to the fifteenth then. The seventeenth is just yeah. Uh, that was target date for us to get the brochure mailed out, um, and then the other. Uh, the other public information that you're required to have 10 day, days before the bond vote. And maybe you want to wait and decide about a Sunday or an adding one until you get feedback from people. Do you want to wait and see how those meetings go? And then you can always add a right. Sunday. This isn't anything. This is really just. Um, well, I think once we get us. through, uh, you know, probably around the 23rd of September, we'll know better how that's shaping up. If we kind of need an extra. Informational night. Um, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Just a matter of numbers. Um, the 28th or the 5th is not 10 days. The what? 28th or the 5th is not 10 days ahead. It's, yeah. uh, it's not. Yeah. So it just has to be within 10 days. Within 10 days. It's prior to that. Yeah. yeah. It just has to fall within that window. I thought you say it was 11, I'm like, <laughs> So that's good. So perfect. Um, Anything else on the water bond vote discussion this evening? Um, okay. So we will. Well, let's see. Um, so Tim, um, we were talking about, you know, soft grading in some areas. Is that a conversation that obviously I've written that in the um, and the packet was that um, we need, there may be a possibility in some areas, upgrading some areas, installing, um, possibly installing some wells. We're not really specific about that yet because we're not, we're not sure. Um, and um, that was just something I think that Bethel has done in the past from speaking to Tim. And, and it's just a possibility that we're that we're exploring because it could be a lot more cost effective. Um, you know, I think Tim had a place where it might be like a half million, but obviously, if you look at that over long term, Tim has done all the math, and I think he told me it was like a 93-year payback. So in that area, when you have areas like that, it may be something to consider to put installing wells We've instead. Done it before, so, I mean, the, the, you know, they put wells. We have some systems efficiencies yeah. that we just can't get over, and it's probably going to be a reality. Yeah, but it's a decision that we're all going to talk about. And we've done it before. I mean, yep. you know, the water line stops at my house, and 
the other two houses on Pleasant Street, and then Watershed Road, you know, got all the wells there, I don't know what it was, six years ago. Or yep. So. so it's nothing that you're concerned, it's, it's, you're open to that discussion? We didn't really have any pushback on the wells out there at that point. Actually, I, I think everybody's happier than they were before. Yeah. Uh, um, Just pressure-wise. Yeah. Yeah. So. So yeah, so that's something that, you know, obviously, um, okay. well, yeah, Tim has figured this out. He, he looked at it, he knows what's financially feasible and what, and if it's not going to be, a, you know, at 118 bucks a quarter for water and you have, a, you know, whatever, the possibility of a half million dollar, it's just the numbers just are never going to work. You're never going right. to pay back on that, so. Was that something you wanted to further discuss tonight, Tim? Or are you good with it like this since we see that they're open to it? Or what would you like to do? Uh, either way. So when? At our next meeting when they, well, not at our next meeting, but that, that portion will probably be brought up more the first September meeting that we have. Some of those options. Uh, no, options. I'd rather discuss it sooner than later. Okay. Yeah. So it seems like, you know, as I had laid out, if you look down below here, there's, if necessary, there's certainly a, um, uh, we can have them, uh, it's a little bit tricky just because we're, we're obviously don't want to disclose location because we don't want to alarm anybody, get anyone upset unnecessarily. So there's certainly a discussion that you could have to, um, to have this discussion in executive session tonight, and I've laid that out for you um, in the bottom part of your, on the agenda and in your packet. Um, Does this tie in with the plan, the master plan? Isn't that a segment of the master plan that was? It's, it is and it isn't. I'd rather, right. I'd rather discuss it later. This has come up. Yeah. yeah. Came up before. Well, why don't we discuss it as we have laid out in the um, executive session and then and we can go from there. Okay. Okay, perfect. Well, let's go. Good. Uh, let's 
my notes here. Okay, select board meeting minutes for August 12th. The only thing I noticed was on the first page, uh, it says Joe Russo asked if the pothole by Rhonda Kettner's house could be addressed. She will talk to Alan Pass. Would that be yeah. Therese? Kurt. Yeah, it was Therese. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got it. All right. I didn't know if it was the wrong day. Oh. No, no, no. Okay, Therese. that's the only thing I saw. Anybody else have anything else? Okay, I would entertain a motion to amend the select board meeting minutes of the 12th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And the constables report. Everybody have an opportunity to go through Oscar's vote. One thing I was going to bring up, Therese, if we can make it work with his schedule, it probably would be nice for the um, Ford Festival to get to have him on duty that day. Okay. Or half that day, or so. usually the morning is busier than the afternoon, right? Yeah, well, and with them doing the street. Yeah. Oh, the street uh, dance. I had the thing. So yeah. if we can get Oscar oh. involved in that. <laughs> he could work that day. Maybe yeah. even just having him get in touch with Susie to see what the whole <laughs> schedule is like to make, you know, when would make the most sense from yeah. their perspective. They gave up these great magnets of a little website, so we'll get him to take a peek at it. He works, a, sometimes he works a 10 hour day anyway, right. so we could get him to come in maybe a little bit later and go. Yeah, if we yeah. get him, because, you know, usually you get to downtown, you know, downtown's busy and Church Street's busy. And okay. Making sure of that. Sure. Never know. Um, Anybody have anything else in there? Other than uh, Oscar is not a canine, but he's a feline cop now. Oh, yeah. oh. Here he's got a cat. So. Yeah, he did. I told, <laughs> he told me about this. He so, said, oh, Teresa, I, yeah. I came to the day we did the cat. I'm like, no, no. He, I, we, I made him talk to the, I made him talk to the, 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 the county and country animal hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he. He must have sweet dogged somebody. He came out of that without a bill because he knew it was going to his budget. And I said, no more cats, Oscar. <laughs> Let him go. He didn't know that we didn't have an ordinance for oh, cats. Apparently, because your animal work controller then says cats. I was thinking about if we could get like a, a stenciling on his vehicle, like a <laughs> paw imprint with a dash nine. Yeah, um, right. It's a cat. You know, cat maybe, nine. maybe a Garfield yeah. suction cup thing in the back. That's right, exactly. But, you know. That's true. <laughs> Uh, we'll All right. Anything in regards to the Oscar stuff? Mm -hmm. And there was some other uh, committee minutes in there. The Rec Committee, and the Energy Committee, and I guess uh, the Conservation Committee mm -hmm. minutes in there. Halloween. So, at least it was April 